let's take a look at some of the things you're talking about across social media and Jeffrey joins me to walk through the streets of Exeter. Yeah, Jeff. absolutely. So um, our thoughts and prayers was how with the Ericsson family. Uh, was a great guy and he led that golden era. Oh, yes. England will never ever forget him. But he's done his time and he's done his bit. So uh, our thoughts again and our prayers are with the family. But let's get to other things you've been talking about on X. And we'll begin with that big one. The resident doctors are down in tool saying, look, we're not going to work. We will withdraw our services from yesterday, Monday, all the way seven days because our colleagues have been targeted or kidnapped. And there's one that's been in kidnappers then for about eight months. So this is coming from Obotex. Obotex World says, this is worrying development. It's a worrying development showcasing the risk medical professional space. Hopefully... The strike will prompt action from the authorities to resolve all the crises, all the crises, brother. Indeed. And Ark Munachimso says kidnapping has been on the rise lately. If you're going out now, be very careful, especially if you're taking public transport. Ensure you stay by the door and end with a prayer. I pray she returns in one piece. Amen to that. Igbala Himanue says, Omo, this is really serious matter. So, the people in the hospital now, how are they going to be doing? That's a big question for everyone. Well, don't worry. Oh, we're getting the doctors, a representative of the doctors on the show to speak to some of these issues. And it uh, takes me to the next one from uh, Lulu. Says, if doctors go on strike, uh, people's lives are in danger. But Apparently. then some say, well, the lives of people are already in danger. Yeah. One of them, Dr. Gani at uh, One for all, all for one, they say. At the end of the day, medical services are critical. They call them essential services, perhaps one of the most critical services for any society. So this is as urgent as yesterday. So this is like 911 on the policy to get things fixed as soon as possible. Let's go to the next one. We talked about this earlier. Yeah. Dr. Ngozi Okonji, while uh, uh, talking to the political class and the citizens as well, as far as this is concerned, she said, politicians, some are in the habit of weaponizing insecurity, literally causing chaos so that the person in power will look bad. And she said, this has to stop. It was a clear statement. So these are your responses. Uh, are you, are you, are you, are you, it says, uh, tourism and insurgency will stop will not stop in Nigeria. Okay, terrorism and insurgency will not stop in Nigeria until the federal government can identify the sponsors and deal with them decisively. There you have it. And Emmanuel Abe uh, says that, well, he thinks uh, she's making a point because it's still questionable uh, to see, according to this user, how he believes the government has been romancing the insecurity situation in the country for so many years. We had a former president actually saying that, you know what, in this my cabinet, in this my inner caucus, in my house, uh, there are suspects. Yeah, suspects right there. There are people against me. Uh, uh, Bani Samuel says, God bless her for this. We all know these whole thing is politically driven, uh, playing opposition as so many politicians is sponsoring all kinds of destructive acts just to appear on television and cry over the same fire they said nigeria will prevail uh, and i want an exclamation to, uh, definitely i want you to now take a moment to go through uh, what ikena oche has to say and it's a very interesting angle to this it says democratizing insecurity and poverty has become the only strategy for attaining and retaining political power in nigeria as far as pseudo elitism is concerned this is something you might need to sit down to properly understand now what they don't realize is that the room for manova is drastically running out for them and this user ends by saying their victims shall surely laugh last so it reminds me of that saying one day for the thief thief and every uh, day oh no, sorry every day, every day one day for the owner <laughs> how did i mix that up <laughs> forgive me thank you so at, at the end of the day uh it's it's cheap thinking it's yeah. poor thinking it's low thinking yeah. it's abysmal obnoxious lack of creativity come on for you to just do i don't know we need to do better and i'm sure if you go to the african continent it's not just nigeria mm. this may be replicated across and other even other parts of the world other parts we hear of the conspiracy uh, theories and the rest so. so but at least in those climes the way we do it here is is just is just out of order why do you go and set your house on fire just to make it look good if you now you set it on fire and rebuild it again somebody says Come on, politicians, you can do better than that. Okay. <laughs> it's not from me, it's a conjure. Well, like and this is why we need better intelligence, yes. really. Because if we have a strong 
or at least stronger intelligence community then you can obviously see through all of these now and we have the uh, nia yeah. exactly and dss changing uh, guards yeah, of yeah, guards or some sort so let's see what the you have to say about that the president appointing new dgs for nia and dss uh, Kara has the first one saying these appointments should make a good impact on the security sector is that a prayer or a statement you're making for sure We'll wait to find out. OC Militainment TV. That's what you call yourself. I hope they are tenure favors also. More grace to them. That's the point. You know, if it works, it works for all of us. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work for all of us. And you know, on the streets of Twitter, you see another kind of conversation happening on this one, uh, particularly the DSS. But this statement, Nuhu Dalhatu says, may this development yield better results. So clearly, Nigerians uh, are. Our Nigerians, with prayers. Yes, Nigerians are exhausted. Yeah. Let's be clear. Nigerians are exhausted. So let's get to the GDP growth. Some good one. Yeah. As far as the management of our economy is concerned, GDP up by 3.19%. Grow by 3.19%. So, Jeffrey, in Q4. If something in, Q1, drops, in Q2. Right. Uh, 2024. So if something drops and then it grows by a certain percentage, yeah. which is higher than what it was before it dropped, can you really say that's an, an increase? But <laughs> Well... <laughs> If it left somewhere below and came up, whether it, it attained the other place or not, statistics, it Jeffrey. <laughs> statistics. Funny <laughs> Obodo says, how is this growth not translating to a better life for citizens in the streets of Oshodi in Lagos, Obiago in Enugu, and Sabongeri in Kano? What are we missing? Mm. And uh, just one more on this one, and that's from Zubair Abdullahi, saying, hopefully in the coming months, our lives will begin to improve because we're seeing the numbers improve. So this is are saying now we're waiting for the lives to improve. Yeah. When workers start receiving the new minimum wage and fuel prices become stable. This is just ends by saying it's been a horrible year since the removal of subsidy and devaluation of the Naira. So, so when, they ag when they aggregate the production within the time frame that GDP measures, mm. uh, but we still know that productivity is a big deal in our country. As soon as we start producing the way we produce, Trust me, a lot of things will change in our country. So and that's where the government uh, should come in. So, but those are the ones we're tracking for you. That's as much as we can take. But don't stop bringing them on. Even on WhatsApp, we told you, if you visit at a hospi any hospital, and whatever you see, if you can take pictures, you can do videos, please send it to us. It yeah. will help us amplify the message we're trying to get across to the government to do something urgently because it's a 911 situation. These doctors are not playing. SOS, they say. So here's what we'll do. Join us right here as we have a sit down right now uh, with the doctors. Uh, find out what is going on, what is the game plan, and what are they hearing? Is there some hope inside? That's in a few seconds right here. So join us. <laughs>